Howdy folks, little John in the brewery. Uh, and I'm going to call this one a brew school. Today I am putting some new taps into my, uh, into my beer fridge. Uh, I've been talking about this for a while. Uh, I originally had six taps in my first fridge, um, which was a upright freezer. Um, it died, new fridge, I got three taps into it um, and couldn't get another three in due to the size of the fridge what well, could have been with using the beer and stuff. But anyway, uh, time has come, I'm getting three, the three more extra taps into the fridge. So I thought, fantastic time to sit down and do a video on how to actually go through and get your um, your line set up and also how to go about putting an actual tap fitting um, and even the gas lines into your fridge. Now be warned that uh, little John's a little bit rough and ready as uh, you're probably all aware of <laughs> for the most part. Um, so the original first section of this um, setup was done fairly, uh, was fairly rough and ready. There's a lot of splitters and things and uh, it was done fairly quickly. So sort of hobbled together. So it's not the um, not the neatest system in the world, and I don't really give a f yeah, I don't really care. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's behind a fridge door. You don't see it. Um, but regardless of that, the process is the same. You know, if you want to be pedantic and all go all fancy and have nice, beautiful, clean lines and stuff, you know, go for your life. Um, but today, it's just about the process of setting up. So I mean, if you're looking at getting into kegging, then this is something you're going to need to know. Okay, but before we get into it, shout out to all the uh, patrons, little John. Cheers, guys. Thanks for your support. Uh, if you're interested in what Patreon's about, hit the link down the bottom. Uh, have a look, see what it's about. Maybe it's just for you. Helps me out. Uh, but for now, let's have a look at this. Now, I've got all the bits and pieces sitting here. I said, I'm putting together. I'm putting three taps into the um, fridge today. Uh, I've got two kegs sitting in the fridge, ready to go, ready to get put on, um, which is the corn ale recently done, and the um, hoppy pail, which I have just got into the keg just before doing this. Um, and it, the video, the actual video for that brew day, that, that brew will come up after this one. Um, so that's <laughs> it's a bit out of but anyway there's two keys in there at the moment so I'm going to I'm gonna have six taps and I'm not brewing anything before Christmas we're only a week from Christmas at the moment so this is part one do I wanted to get this set up properly for Christmas so the sixth the sixth the sixth keg I am just going to run some bourbon and coke in um so when I get this set up, I'll, I've got a keg uh, so I'm cleaning at the moment, uh, sanitising. Um, when I put this together, I'll pop that onto the onto the tap. Um, and sometime between now and Christmas Day, I'm going to sit down. I'm just going to do a little bit of a uh, bit of a kitchen, Christmas catch up, and I'll have a look at all those six drinks that are on tap. Anyway, so. What you've got to do, you get your keg set up, you've got to make lines. You've got to have your keg, but you've got to put your keg in. You've got to get gas into the fridge, and you've got to get your beer out of the fridge. Okay? That requires lines to get the gas into the keg, and then requires lines to get the beer from the keg to the taps. Now, Probably should have done this with an empty keg instead of a full one, but anyway, your keg, you got your two poppets, or poppets inside, your two disconnects on either side, one for your gas in, one for your beer out. Okay, so you need to get that in and out. So you'll see a disconnect, like so, black, 
generally black B, B for beer, black beer. Uh, and you have grey ones for gas. Plastic, they come in varying quantity qualities. You can buy stainless steel ones. Um, I've just popped these stainless steel ones away. Uh, I use stainless steel ones for um, on the transfer line from um, the fermenter to the keg. Uh, the only ones I've got, they're a bit pricier, so I've only bought a couple. Um, over time, I'd like to upgrade all to stainless, but I've been I've had beer in keg for years now, um, and I've only ever used the plastic disconnects, and I've had not an issue. I've not had a single one play up on me. Um, I've always bought CMB brand, uh, which are German made, uh, and have always been touted as being very good. Um, these recent ones I've actually bought from Kegland. I bought new stuff to go with these new taps and whatnot. Um, so I have bought Kegland once. I've been using these on my transfer setup, and I've had no problem with them as yet. Uh, so these are a bit cheaper than CMB. About probably maybe two thirds of the price, maybe, maybe even half the price. Um, but these, the Kegland ones, they are they are reasonably heavy. I've got a couple of keg, a couple of keg king ones, but a couple of older ones which are much lighter. These ones are a bit heavier, so I think they're made a little bit better. But anyway, you need those. So you need one beer disconnect and one gas disconnect for each keg that you're going to run. So you set up, you, you run your gas, obviously you need your bottle, like so. You have your cylinder, this is only a little fella, 2.6, generally you're going to run a 6 kilo, a big fella. Um, this one, I've got a 6 kilo, six kilo on the fridge, this 2.5 is just the port, this is the one I can move around the brewery and this I use for doing, um, as part of transfers and doing and purging and stuff like that, and but this is set up exactly but back exactly the same as you're going to set up for your keg regulator, your gas outlet. This one's running a duo tight, which means I can swap out this connector if I need to, and your gas disconnect on the end, which can hook onto your keg. Okay, now in my system, well in any system, you should run a uh, non-return valve on here somewhere, somewhere between the gas bottle on your first keg, or your keg. Uh, little, a non-return valve which will stop any liquid if it gets into your gas, getting back in here and stuffing your regulator. Uh, it's, they're about anywhere from 6 to $12 depending on which kind you buy. Uh, and it's cheap insurance to protect you know, your 60 70 you know, $110 regulator depending on what brand you're using. Okay, so we need to set this sort of line up for the keg, which I've already done. So I'm not going to go through that. But that's the system, and I said on the fridge, we have the same thing. I run the line and the line goes into the fridge and then it goes through various splitters and goes off into six different, um, six separate beer lines which go to each different keg. Uh, I do have the little mini regulators which I want to put on, um, but that's going to be down the track a little bit. To do, I have to pull the whole fridge, everything out of the fridge, uh, and reset everything up. And I've got to really plan that exactly how that's going to work in the current fridge. <laughs> I had planned on having a Series X kegerator four tap in the brewery for Christmas when they first come out, and that was part of the. I bought stuff on the basis that that was what was going to happen. That was going to be the Christmas buy and so I have got the board and everything to go along with that uh, and as a lot of you may be aware there was a little bit of a drumble with the, with the price of that jacking up out of nowhere um, and that went off the table so I've gone back to this keg keg back to the original fridge uh, and playing with it so the board and the mini regulators are a little bit off at the moment but they're a good idea for having individual pressures but as it stands I'm running six kegs off one outlet from the gas bottle, all at the same, so they're all running at the same pressure. Okay, so there's no variance over the kick. And I'm not too concerned, because at the moment I'm running all light um, lager and pale ales, so I'm pretty happy for them to all run at the same carbonation. So, 
what we're looking at, main thing we're looking at with the line, for the beer, is this is what we need to set up. Now this is the line off the uh, camping setup I made a little bit earlier in the year. Um, so this is going to go under my third keg, the Coca-Cola keg, um, straight as it is. Um, so it's ready to go. So what we're going to do, I'm going to, to, I'm going to get from the parts, but we're going to make two more of these. That's for our keg, so that's our disconnect. And that is a tail for our tap. And I'll show you that part in just a minute. Right, so I've already got one done. I need to make two. We're going to go through and make one. Uh, and I'll, I'll, when I finish making the two, we'll go to the fridge and we'll actually get the taps into the fridge because that's a different, um, that's another thing altogether. <coughs> okay, so the bits you need, and this, it seems like a lot, but it's fairly, it's not that bad. But if you don't have them all, then you're going to have a failure somewhere along the line. So, first thing you need, is you need a tap. And taps are a you know, there's lots of lots of options for taps, um, and this is the option I'm going with. Uh, it's a Nuka tap. Just the stainless steel standard standard edition. Now I've already got three of these on the fridge, so these will match up nicely. Uh, they do come in varying. You can get black ones and stuff, so you can go different colours. But there's there's all sorts of taps. These are relatively budget budget friendly. Uh, they're not the cheapest on the market. They I'm really happy with the job that they're doing at the moment. Uh, and these were an upgrade on the original taps I had. Okay. Your tap has this little, like a little hat and collar on it, which holds the, the um, drive arm in place. Okay, now, yeah. I'm not gonna bloody pull all that apart at the moment, because there's no great need to. Uh, but that's, that's your arm which opens and closes your tap. Yeah. Now, behind that you need a shank. Now this is a long shank. These are about 10, about 10 centimetres long. Okay. And you'll see when I um, when we put it in the fridge why I'm using a long shank. Uh, if you're using a font, a font tower, on like say a kegerator or um, a keezer, anything like that, then you'll use a short shank because you won't have the room for the long shank. But I use the long shank because I've got to go through. I've got to go through the door of the fridge, so they need to be longer. And I think there's an advantage to these, and I'll, again, I'll talk about it later. Okay, so that goes that goes into the door of your fridge. Okay. You have this collar, which has four holes through it. That slides over. This is the outside of your fridge. And that holds, that's how you attach your tap. Screw that on. And that attaches your tap to your shank. Okay. Now, your tap will come with a little nice little decorative flange cover which slips in behind that and then sits flush against your door so it gives you a nice clean finish against your fridge door okay and you've generally got to buy these little bits and pieces separately okay yeah into that little tap assembly mix you can add a spring so this makes your tap self-closing and essentially it just sits in the back of your tap and sits in your sits in your shank and that way it provides resistance and well as it says self-closing it will it, it, it will make you it will make your tap close uh, and again, we can have a look at that once we've got it up and running. It's a little bit fiddly when it's not actually in the fridge. Okay, so tap, spring, shank, 
collar. Now, there's a couple of collars. Okay, so that's on the outside of the door with, the, with your shank going through the door. Yeah, the shank's just hollow. Yeah, there's a little, we're well, just going to shut there or not, there's a little ridge just inside, and that's where that spring sits against, sits against so it works. Okay. So this is inside your fridge. So you need to get the line onto the end here. So what you need is a tail. This little bit of gear. And this is where your hose attaches on there. And that sits into your... Uh, now I'm missing a washer off that. It should be in my box. I'll have to find that before we put it together. Right, that sits in there. And then you have another collar which sits over there, screws on the end of your barb and your, oh, end of your shank and holds that in place. And then we attach hose to that. Now that's an elbow. You can get some that are already made in straight. This is one I've got. I've only got the one of them. And it's got straight shank strapped the back of it. Um, and this is a smaller one, it's 4mm, where well, this is a 5mm. Oh, yeah, five, 5 from 4, anyway. Uh, the smaller one's easier to work with, but you're probably, depending on your beer hose, you can go a higher one. Okay. But that sits like so. Now, yeah, this is where you've got to be careful. You can slip a little, just a little rubber washer up onto there, and there's a nut which screws on, and that's for attach holding your shank into your door. So it, you know, it tightens up against your door and holds your tap in place. And that all attaches. So you end up with that. and that sort of thing going on like so and then we have multiples of these so you need a tap handle these are just standard black resin they cost like a dollar I don't know they're bloody two bucks or something each when you buy them as that, you can get fancy, get fancy, fancy ones if you want, stainless ones, get them custom made. Get yourself one of these tools if you haven't got one floating around the brewery or wherever. It's good bloody, I think it's called a 5-in-1 multi-tool. Okay. And aside from that, having nice little bloody gaps, like the, so they will do these little washers and things. And you can do you know, various things up with them. The most important thing they will do is they will do these collars up on the back of your, on your tap because they're perfectly round and you see there's just a little little notch on there that sits into that hole and then you can <laughs> you can turn that. You'll have a hell of a time getting that to do up without one when you'll scratch the crap out of it using any other form of bloody thing. Okay. So that's our tap assembly all together. And again, that's going to be easy. You'll see when we put it into the, when we've actually put it into the fridge, fit, fitting it together, and you'll and you'll see how important it is to get all the pieces in the right order. Um, now, on the um, other end of the line with our disconnect, you know, so these disconnects are I've got an MFL end. So I can use a threaded duo duo tight fitting to push in. So that will just screw on, tighten up, and I can just push line straight into this end. So it's going to make my job a hell of a lot easier because I'm only going only going to have to get line onto two beer shanks. So the two beer shanks and two of these. Now you can get. Disconnect. Uh, 
You can also get your disconnect with obviously with a barbed end. That's more standard. And if you do the barbed end, then you need to feed your line on. Same as this fella. And then you need to be using clamps. These are a stepless clamp. Uh, and you need just a pair of pincers to close them off. And again, you'll see that in a minute. So, definitely easier if you can get the uh, duo types. So think about that when you get when you get your gear. Uh, it needs a bit harder to get a duo tight on this end, on your um, actually onto your elbows. That's a little bit harder. So, but if you can get them on your disconnect, it will save you a bit of time. So, ready to go. Got myself some water here. It was boiling. It's now just hot. But it will do the job. At least I hope it will. And this is where this little and very important tool will come in. Long nose pliers, uh, or needle nose pliers, depends on how you want to, how you want to look at it. Um, or some people I've seen use they use a golf tee, and you'll see why in a minute. Uh, but that's a good little tool for doing it. So we have our beer line. And you need to be aligned to be a certain length. And that will vary depending on your actual system. Uh, and there's calculators online for working this stuff out. Now be aware that most of those calculators, well, every calculator I've ever I've actually found, they're American based and they work in feet. Um, as a result, uh, they can be a little bit confusing. But use them in conjunction with a um, conversion program and you'll be right. So I've run my numbers through the calculator and it tells me I need, for this setup, for these kegs on this top row of my fridge, because they're basically the same height as the taps, it's telling me I need eight, eight and a bit foot of line, which is about two point four meters so I've got about that here okay so I'm gonna run with that and this is where I like the idea of these MFL of these duo tights the MFL fitting because other tool don't go crazy on doing that I found they've got, they've got a washer in the end so they only need to be firmly done don't crap, don't squeeze the crap out of the washer. Let the washer do its job, just nice and just firm. Okay. So the beauty of that is that I can put the line in. If I find the line's too long, I'm getting a slow flow and not getting any foam, then I can shorten up a little bit and just pop it back in without any mucking around. So that's a big plus for using these fittings with the duo type and the MFL. So I'm not going to put that on at the moment because it's going to be more fitting to this end. So, let's see. I'm going to start with this big barb because this is going to be a bastard. So, and you'll see why. That barb is as thick as this hose. So, it will be a challenge to get on. So, what I am going to do, I'm actually going to reboil this water. So, give me, I'll be back in a sec. because I'm going to want that water really hot to get this as soft as I can. Okay. Mm. Counting down the crispy boys and girls. So we've been cleaning up out here in the garage and I've been changing my fridges around. So I'm compacting. I've taken 
originally this fridge, or the, the, the keg fridge, has had three kegs in it, and it's had all my, you know, bottled beer and you know, commercial stuff, all the ready-to-drink stuff. Um, and I've had the second fridge, which is just been the conditioning fridge, sitting at cellar temps. But I'm putting the kegs all into the beer fridge. It will still have enough room to hold probably about a carton's worth of beer. Or that, maybe, maybe a carton and a half. Um, between the kegs and stuff, because I'm basically going to have no shelves left in the fridge itself. Um, there was probably enough room at the top of the fridge to get a shelf of cans, but I can't get a shelf in because of where the, the light and stuff is. So, but I'll get I can get some. I'll be able to get cans around. You'll see when I finish how that is. So we get our line. Just dip that into our boiling water. And obviously, we'll be a bit careful with this if we can. Now. So the conditioning fridge is no longer gonna gonna be in play. Reason being, now I'm getting back to six kegs. I don't need it. Um, I'm not gonna be bottling much beer. Any beer that is getting bottled is gonna go to the brother uh, and won't stay here for long at all. Um, I'll only be keeping enough of those to actually do taste testing. So that'll be two, you know, maybe two bottles a batch. So I've no need for that conditioning fridge anymore. So it's now going to be just a beer fridge. So all my, all my commercial beer will all go in there and any bottles that I do need to keep them float around. Um, you know, Imperial Stouts and things that are, that are sitting and keeping for, for time will, will live in there now. And then just the uh, ferment fridge. So, not a bad idea of these I found either if you can sort of let them heat up a little bit. Because you'll lose your heat pretty quickly, both from the line, uh, and it'll take a few goes to get this stretched enough, particularly on this big, on this big one. This little fella's going to be nothing at all. I, I, I reckon I'd need to get that on there without even softening the hose. But I always soften the hose because just makes it just helps to ensure it gets a good grip on the um, on the flange because uh, it has that little bit of softness, and as it cools, it really goes grip on. So once that's hot, just get your, your pliers and just work them in. And then just open them a little bit as you go. Put them in, wedge them in, opening them. And what you're doing is you're stretching that line, which then makes it easier to get on here. Now I will tell you from experience, you're getting onto these Big fellas, it's not easy, and you've really got to take what you can get. Now, I've actually got that on first go. And one thing you do have to watch is that you don't force a kink into this hose because you are going to have beer flowing through that, and you don't want anything extra causing any extra turbulence. Okay, now yeah, that's on a bit, but I'd like it a bit further, so I'll just sit that in there for a little bit longer. And feed it up. And another good reason to not put anything on the other end when you do this is so you can get your clamp on. Um, several times I've been doing building lines, I've stuck one end on, then gone down the other, got it all bloody softened and forced onto the uh, onto the flange, and then I realised I didn't put me clamp, I haven't got me clamp on the line, and I had to pull the whole thing apart and start again. Ah oh, no! The bloody things come off. Let me fucking read about it. That's, that's fucked up. Anyway, we continue on. And we'll go again. Oh shit, that's now bloody caught up. Alright, we're back on again.
You don't need these on a massive long way, but you do just really long enough to get a bloody clamp on there. It's good. I mean, the more the better. Just for safety's sake, makes you feel a bit better. That'll do me. Okay, not on a real long way, but it's enough. So I'll pop me clamp on the other end. Get it all the way through. Get them on there. Use our clamp and our pincers to close it in a good squeeze and move our line on there. Good to go. Right. Yeah. Happy with that. Now while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to pop my Collar on there as well, just so I don't forget it. It's already on there, that's good to go. Already up. Now, right now, the other end just simply has to push on. There I shall go. Beautiful, and there we have it. One line ready to go. So do that with the second one. And as I said this is going to be a hell of a lot easier. It's going to take much to go in there. We'll get this fella on. I seem to be missing a second collar for a flange. I'll have to go into my bag of tricks and find one. I must have grabbed it out. Get that on big jobs. Alright, uh, so again, it's worked the pliers in the end. It won't take too much because of the shape of that. A little smaller. Bang. And you see, that one's just pushed on real easy. So, so if you can, go for the smaller. Um, the smaller flange just makes life a bit easier. And these are things you learn over time of putting you know, these things together. But I've got what I've got now. I'm not going to bloody go and buy new ones just for the sake of because it doesn't quite make the line easier. Um, maybe some point down the track. But the reality is it's on and it works. So I'm not going to bother fixing it. The old adage, you know, don't, don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And clamp on there. Good. So I need to find this flange now. Alright, I'm going to do that. We'll go around that for the moment, and then we'll, uh, we'll come back, we'll, have a little, we'll move around a little bit, we'll have a look at uh, getting this tap into the fridge, into the door. Okay, so the fridge has currently got three taps. Now I'm going to put a fourth in with this bank and then two more over here. Uh, I did want to go three and three and keep these even, but if I put the three here, I was just a bit worried this tap was getting a little bit too close to the handle, the handle there. So I can fit four in here. I'm going to look at the inside. So you've got three, 
three kegs on the bottom, which have been there for <laughs> donkey's ages. Gas comes in from the uh, side here. Just leads through the door of the fridge. Uh, runs around, splits into multiple amounts of uh, gas disconnects, and there's the last one there right, waiting to go. So three off the bottom, splits up the back. Uh, I don't want to do too much detail here. And then three taps running off the back here. So you can see the uh, Now you can see the assembly here which is just fitted on. Got your tail and the flange off the back of the shank running down, which runs down on the in your keg. And you can see the, the set the, the tap set up with the uh, flange and your collar running through your shank with all your uh, tap bits and pieces there. So, yeah, so I had three on, I've got two banks, they're the same. So I had, I had one to just duplicate this three over to here, but I said, a bit worried about getting too close to this handle. So I can fit another tap in that bank and make that four at the same spacing, and then sit two, just sit two more on this side. So it's going to be a little bit, a little bit unbalanced, but that's okay. Uh, so you can see there, the, the, the two kegs, another keg will go there, and I'll be able to sit some beers around here on the shelf, and I've got a couple of shelves there which can carry some beers, currently holding mostly uh, Cooper's Vintage, which I'm thinking of actually getting rid of. Um, shelf for uh, dry yeast, and uh, there's room in here for other bits and pieces. But a lot of that stuff now will go into this fridge, which was the conditioning fridge. Uh, it is now just simply the beer fridge. And starting to stock up for Christmas. Chris, Chrissy Ham in there. So this, this is all fridge, so this will just bloody be full of stock. So look, I'm looking good there. So that's where we're going. So we're looking to get new taps in here, so I'm going to move a few beers out of the way, so I can get into that. Okay, and what I'll be using is just a hole saw. 22 millimeter, which is uh, perfect size for the shank. Rubber on the drill, and I'm hoping this will be long enough to. Uh, And all you need to do is just drill through. Now I've measured me the drill points. Now you're generally pretty safe going through the door of the fridge because there's no there's no cooling in the fri in the in the um, fridge, no wiring and pipes and stuff. If you're going through the sides, then you need to be uh, very much careful. We've all seen people with a bloody stories of people who've lost their uh, fridges for doing that. So. Here. You should be careful because they bloody bits can want to slide around on you. And a decent. Drill and you're through there nice and easy. And I'm gonna hole straight through. No problem at all. 
Beautiful. And obviously this is why we have a bit of a flange, just to make that tidy when we finish. So, I'll grab me uh, bits and pieces. Okay, so... Ready to, ready to put our tap in. So we'll get the shank, put the uh, tap collar on, put our self-closing spring in, tap on, get these two connected. Just hand tight at the moment. Get our flange on the back there as well. Shanks in. I find with mine particularly, I need to screw those last few laps in just to get it through the plastic. Hasn't moved quite as much as metal on the front that's good to go pop our rubber washer over lock nut straight on Use our multi-tool. Tighten that up. Just hold your tap on the front. We can use a shifter on this if you want. That's her in place. Then we pop our light on. Okay, so got our line. Pop our washer on. your collar all the way back down the bottom if you can avoid it. Up. Now there's a good reason to put that collar. <laughs> Just be careful that collar make sure it's on there before you put your hang on if that's any bigger. If that was a bigger clamp that collar wouldn't get back over it so I'll just feed that on. Screw it in. And I will need the shifter. Place there. And there we go, that should be good. And our hose, which we will roll up once, once I've got everything done. <laughs> Work out how it wants to go so it stays out of the way. And this fella goes on there. Yeah, make sure we have enough hose. Oh, I'll tie that up with a tight cable tie. And that will sit out of the way. 
Now just need to repeat that process with the other two taps and we'll come back and we'll have a look when they're, uh, when they're all in. I don't, we uh, <laughs> had a slight hiccup come to the last tap and the shank uh, for some reason the collar doesn't want to actually come over the back of the tap um, and that's that that was the skinny shank with the, with the skinny little tail built into it um, so I've got, I've got a funny feeling that um, it was a tap I got ages ago off someone gave to me I've got a funny feeling that one of these other collars is probably the one that fits on it but I'm going to pull all these taps apart to find it so keg of bourbon and cokes off the um, menu at the moment so I'll just pop a I'm just going to pop some tape over that for the time being that'll get us out of trouble so let's see if we can get a pour out of one of these new taps Uh, looks pretty good to me. That's the core nail. All right. That's looking good. Okay, so some success, some not success. Um, yeah, I don't know what the uh, problem is, but yeah, the, the tap just won't attach to that collar on this shank. I said must have been. All the other shanks are the same, so I dare say that was the very first tap I had, which was given to me. Um, so I'd say whatever was in that connected to that only works on that so there's probably one collar that's slightly different so that's all good I've got all, all, all the keg beer is on tap for Christmas so that's um that was the most important thing uh, that pour was a little bit little slow they're not real slow um, not a real lot of fun I might um might pull it back might take about half a meter off that we'll see how we go uh, so at the moment, I'm just going to need to buy a new, um, a new shank and a tail to um, get the six tap on. But that's no big drama. That can happen after um, that can happen after Christmas. I can get that in. It's not a big deal. So uh, that's it. It's not a difficult process. Um, so it's just making sure you've got all the bits that you need. Um, go back through the vid, have a look at them all. Um, any, you know, any decent home brew shop, you know, any decent supplier that, that sells fittings is going to have all the bits and pieces you need. Let's uh, just think. Take your time, get the things in order. Make sure everything's clamped up nice and tight so you don't, don't get any leaks. Yeah. Once you've got it on, test the leaks, test your gas. You know, spray some soapy water or some stair star sand on all your joints, make sure they're not leaking. Uh, your beer line, you're going you're gonna to know if it's leaking, you're going to get bloody beer in, the, in your fridge. Uh, that's pretty obvious. But the gas is a different story. Gas will, you know, you'll leak without knowing and you'll lose a, ga you'll lose a, bloody, you know, lose a bloody whole keg of bloody gas. Uh, which isn't, yeah, it's not a real cheap exercise, so you don't want to do that too often. They're going to like that for Christmas. Well, that's it. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what's involved in kegging your beer and having beer on tap. It's not difficult, it doesn't take long, you know. An hour or two, depending on how many kegs, you, how many taps and stuff you're putting together. But yeah, an hour, an hour to two hours, beer or two while you're doing it. Yeah, sacrifice the fridge to the beer gods and get 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 some taps up and going. 
and have beer on tap. There ain't nothing wrong with that. No guys, otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you've learned something. If you've got any comments, any questions, as always, stick them down the bottom. Go for your life. Uh, Patreons, subscribers, thumbs up, thanks guys. Let's see, if you aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button down there in the corner. If you like this, if this has been helpful for you, hit the like button. It all helps. But that's me, Little John, for today. Brew school, setting up your, setting up your taps. Getting glorious golden nectar. Flowing freely in your own beer cave, garage, kitchen, laundry, back veranda, wherever it is that you're setting up. But get into it. It's, it's fantastic. It's just like having a pub at home, but better because it's cheaper. And the beer's better. Until I see you again, we're brewing beer. Drinking beer, talking beer, good brewing.